In the searing heat of a remote Indian village, an unassuming burial site was cracked open, revealing skeletal remains older than any local legend. At first, nothing seemed unusual. Bones, beads, rusted blades. But when the remains were sent for analysis, scientists uncovered a secret encoded in the very bloodline of the ancient dead. Thousands of miles away, across deserts and seas, in the hills of Israel, a similar discovery was made. Fragments of DNA with a nearly identical sequence. Two regions, two histories. One genetic fingerprint. Could it be a coincidence? Or the remnants of a forgotten migration, hidden for over 2,000 years? Suddenly, myths long dismissed as folklore began to shimmer with possibility. What if an ancient people once traveled between these lands, leaving behind no trail, except the code inside their bones? What does this mean for our understanding of ancient civilizations and the hidden threads that tie distant cultures together? This is the untold story of how a genetic breadcrumb may rewrite what we thought we knew about the ancient world. The Indian subcontinent and the Levant, two cradles of civilization, each with millennia of written history, oral tradition, and cultural depth. On one side, the vast empires of the Maurya and Gupta, builders of temples and guardians of Vedic knowledge. On the other, the ancient kingdoms of Judea and Israel, home to prophets, scribes, and the sacred texts of Abrahamic faiths. Yet, in all the annals of time, there was little to suggest a direct link between these distant worlds. Until now. Archaeological records from both regions seem to run parallel but separate. No shared script, no artifacts crossing borders, no mention of direct contact in surviving scrolls. But beneath the surface, beyond the grasp of language and stone, there lay another archive, the human genome. And this is where the mystery deepens. Genetic samples pulled from a 2,500-year-old site in northern India carried haplogroups not typically associated with South Asia. Strangely, these sequences showed affinities with populations currently residing in the Middle East, specifically Jewish communities of Sephardic descent. The odds of this being random were astronomically low. Had history missed a chapter? A migration erased by time? The evidence was mounting. But the origin remained unclear. It all began in the dusty fields of Uttar Pradesh, India, where a group of local farmers accidentally unearthed what appeared to be fragments of pottery and bone while digging a new irrigation canal. At first, no one paid much attention, but when archaeologists from the University of Delhi were called in, their preliminary excavation revealed a full burial site. Dozens of skeletons, all laid in a uniform, east-facing orientation, with burial goods uncharacteristic of the region. One skeleton stood out. Preserved better than the rest, it belonged to a young adult male, adorned with a copper pendant etched in a geometric pattern not native to any known Indian artifact style. Intrigued, researchers sent bone samples for radiocarbon dating and DNA sequencing. What they found shocked them. The mitochondrial DNA passed down through the maternal line showed markers not typically seen in South Asian populations. Instead, it bore similarities to genetic profiles found in Middle Eastern Jewish communities. This was not a mere anomaly. It was a genetic whisper from the past, hinting at a migration, a connection, or perhaps an entire community that history had forgotten. The puzzle had been opened. But who were these people? And what were they doing in India over 2,000 years ago? The discovery ignited a firestorm in academic circles. A joint team of geneticists, historians, and archaeologists from India, Israel, and the U.S. was quickly assembled. The goal? To trace the genetic anomaly and uncover its origin. Researchers began comparing the Uttar Pradesh remains with DNA databases 
from ancient cemeteries in Jerusalem, Safed, and other regions historically occupied by Jewish communities. Initial results confirmed the unexpected, a significant overlap in mitochondrial haplogroups. But this alone wasn't enough. The scientists needed context, evidence of cultural, linguistic, or trade interactions that could validate a human connection between these distant regions. Yet, ancient texts were silent. No inscriptions, no records of Jewish settlements in that part of India from that period. Some experts argued it might be a false positive, contamination, or a rare mutation. So the team turned to more advanced techniques, isotope analysis to determine geographical mobility, and proteomic profiling to examine diet and environment. Even more skeletons from the site were tested. The findings were consistent. The same genetic link kept emerging, pointing to a small but genetically distinct group, Middle Eastern in origin, yet buried deep in Indian soil. The deeper they looked, the clearer it became. This wasn't an isolated burial. It was the tip of something buried much deeper in time and history. Using next-generation sequencing, the team managed to reconstruct large portions of the ancient genome from the remains in India. The results were astonishing. The Y-chromosome haplogroup, a marker passed through the paternal line, was identified as J2, a lineage commonly found among Jewish populations, particularly those of Sephardic and Mizrahi origin. This was the second genetic match, and this time it was conclusive. But the breakthrough came when researchers compared these sequences to ancient DNA extracted from a first-century CE burial site near the Dead Sea. The match was not just statistical, it was familial. The individual buried in India was a genetic cousin, separated by only a few generations, from someone interred thousands of kilometers away in ancient Judea. Isotope analysis further confirmed that this person had not lived his entire life in India. Traces of strontium in the teeth pointed to early childhood, spent in a different geological region, consistent with the terrain of the Middle East. This wasn't trade. This wasn't conquest. This was migration, or exile. And it happened at a time when history records major upheavals in the Jewish world, the Babylonian captivity, Roman displacement, and internal diasporas. The bones in India were no longer just a mystery. They were a genetic bridge between two civilizations, one buried, the other still discovering its past. Picture this. Around 2,000 years ago, a small group of travelers leaves the Levant. Perhaps they were merchants, scholars, or refugees fleeing persecution. They carried with them their language, their customs, and their sacred scrolls, traces of an identity forged under the sun of Judea. Their journey was long, dangerous, and largely undocumented. But it was real. Following ancient trade routes that snaked through Mesopotamia and Persia, they may have joined caravans moving eastward, eventually reaching the Indus Valley, a region already steeped in complex civilizations. There, they settled, isolated but resilient, preserving fragments of their origin across generations. They buried their dead facing east. They forged copper talismans with foreign symbols. They lived quiet lives until their story was swallowed by time. As centuries passed, their language faded, their rituals assimilated, and their bloodlines diluted into the local population, but their DNA endured. Encoded in the bones of a forgotten youth, the memory of a people who once crossed continents now speaks louder than any scroll. And for the first time, with science as a time machine, we can see their path, step by silent step. This wasn't legend. It was history, hidden in plain sight. The connection between ancient India and Israel was never written in ink or carved in stone. It was written in the code of life itself. For centuries, their shared history was buried, 
not by conspiracy, but by time. And now, as science reaches further into the past, it's revealing what empires, languages, and religions once tried to conceal, that humanity's roots are far more entangled than we ever imagined. This discovery challenges our assumptions about identity, migration, and isolation. It tells us that even in the ancient world, borders were more permeable than we think, and that history isn't a straight line, but a tangled web of forgotten footsteps. Who else crossed these ancient paths? What other secrets lie in the dust, waiting for DNA to speak on their behalf? One burial site, one strand of DNA, and an entire chapter of history rewritten. If these stories captivate you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more astonishing revelations that bridge science, history, and mystery. Because sometimes, the past doesn't just echo, it whispers.